snoozing for Spain in a suburban shopping center in the capital. Participants are taking part in what's being billed as the country's first ever siesta contest. The BMJ has published an intriguing sleep study from Spain, which surprisingly may suggest an entirely new way to treat high blood pressure. The serious scientific research is not about the siesta though, it's all about something which you get when you're not sleeping well at night, sleep apnea. All too often sufferers from sleep apnea find themselves taking an involuntary siesta, which can be fatal. I'm a GP. There are issues to do with sleep apnea that we're becoming more and more aware of. We have lots of patients who are taxi drivers, lorry drivers, patients who are working in difficult environments. Sleep apnea is important. Por el tema de la apnea del sueño, ¿por qué vino a vernos? Pues la verdad es que vine casi empujado por la mujer debido a que no le dejaba dormir. ¿Cuánto tiempo hacía que su mujer le decía que le pasaba esto? Bastante, bastante tiempo. ¿Y por qué no le hacía caso? Porque, porque es un poco pesada, la verdad. Joseph Montserrat from Barcelona and Joaquin Cantola from Victoria led a multicenter study. Hundreds of patients with sleep apnea were studied in sleep labs in 20 hospitals in Spain. Millions of people throughout over the world suffer from obstructive sleep apnea. Until now, the main indication for treatment is severe obstructive sleep apnea plus symptoms related to obstructive sleep apnea. During the night, when a patient suffers of sleep apnea, I mean when the upper way occludes, there is an hypoxia and different awakenings throughout the night. So during all the night, the patient does not sleep properly. And if the patient does not sleep properly, this activates a sympathetic system and also induces a systemic inflammation. Both, both parts induce hypertension. Bueno, tenemos ya los resultados de, de la prueba que, que le hicimos cuando vino, cuando vino a dormir. 82 veces cada hora usted se para de respirar. Esto es importante porque eh, una persona que se para de respirar 82 veces cada hora significa que su cerebro tiene que despertarse 82 veces para que usted vuelva a respirar. Es como si a alguien le taparan la nariz y la boca y tuviera que despertarse para poder volver a respirar. Muchas veces hasta en fiestas y así que salías por a dar un paseo y a ver... Pues yo nada más que me sentaba, eh, plas, plas, y me quedaba dormida en cualquier sitio. Sí, sí, estaba comiendo tranquilamente, y pues, eh, despacio, de hecho yo como muy despacio, pero me iba entrando una sonolencia y que me, me llegaba a quedar dormido, eh. pero comiendo, eh, sobre, eh, estaba comiendo y tranquilamente, y, y la mujer me decía, eh, que te duermes. This patient, he is 48 years old. He is a professional driver. No, hay veces que arranco y a la hora ya me está dando sueño. ¿Ha tenido alguna vez algún susto de esto que va conduciendo y uff, uff? Bueno, cuando te das cuenta de que ya vas dormido, no es un minuto, es un segundo o menos. Pero ya sabe que dos, tres segundos son suficientes para salirse de la carretera. Sí, ¿no? sí. Y de Italia, por ejemplo, salir de una fábrica. Muy a menudo salimos de allí. Para venir a España, ya la medida era darme cuenta de que voy en dirección contraria. ¿Cómo es posible esto? Esto se llama conducta automática y aunque le parezca extraño es que ha conducido dormido. Es Ajá, decir, pues ha, ha pasado no un tiempo la... conduciendo durmiendo 
pero para un profesional como usted puede conducir dormido una pequeña parte del tiempo porque para usted es muy de rutina, sí. pero no tiene buenos reflejos. Si ocurriera algo imprevisto, tendría un accidente. Ya, 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 ya. Seguro, seguro, seguro. Bueno, usted de todas formas duerme en torno a 8 o 9 horas cada día y parece que no es un problema el que le dé el sueño que usted no duerma lo suficiente, porque parece que duerme lo suficiente. A pesar de eso, le da el sueño. I'm fascinated by these studies on sleep apnea because if you think how difficult it is to go to sleep, if you are in a different environment, in a hotel room for example, the difficulties of sleeping in a different situation, can you imagine how difficult it must be to have a proper night's sleep hooked up to these EEG electrodes which takes the trace of your brain and can tell whether the patient is asleep or not. You have oxygen level monitoring, which is attached to your finger. And you have continuous blood pressure monitoring, so you have a cuff attached to your arm, which increases the pressure intermittently. Difficult situation in which to sleep. With sleep apnea, one of the problems is that your blood pressure can be raised. This study is interesting because instead of looking at treating the blood pressure directly, they've looked at treating the sleep apnea to see if there's an effect on the blood pressure. The question was if despite of symptoms, to treat the sleep apnea also improve systemic blood pressure. One of the benefits of this trial is that it's in a number of centers drawing from a wide range of patients in a wide range of different size hospitals. 20 different hospitals with different quality of the hospitals. Big hospitals, small hospitals, this is real life. So it's much more realistic. It means much more in terms of how it helps doctors make decisions on patients. The CPAP mask gives positive air pressure to make sure a patient keeps breathing. Joseph Montserrat invented a way to offer such treatment in a sham way to allow a double-blind trial to take place. In this study, both groups of patients have the CPAP mask, which covers over the face. And when the patient put the mask here in the nose, here we have a small hole. So, some air go outside. If the hole, instead to be like this, is like this, so the pressure inside is zero. And the patient feel flow like a pressure, but it's different but the, the patient feel that something happened, but there's no pressure, it's only flow. The intervention group have positive pressure, and the sham group have the same mask, but a larger hole, so they don't have the pressure. Probably is not perfect, but it's as perfect as possible as a placebo. You can, find, you can do double blind study with this kind of placebo. In fact, patients like our truck driver are given CPAP treatment as a matter of urgency, but they're not included in this kind of trial. Patients who have severe sleep apnea have a very disrupted sleep, a very disrupted normal day, and they need treatment. It wouldn't be appropriate to include those in a trial where they wouldn't have treatment. The risk of accident for a patient with obstructive sleep apnea is seven uh, times more risk. Seven times more risk. So our truck driver immediately began CPAP treatment. In just two weeks his blood pressure was down and his potentially dangerous daytime sleepiness much reduced. And this is generally the case with this treatment. ¿Y qué ha ocurrido con la presión arterial? Me ha bajado bastante. ¿Qué le ha dicho el médico de su médico de cabecera? que estoy mejor, que me ha ido muy bien, que, que no lo dejé, claro, que yo estoy bastante mejor. They had calculated or had estimated their study looking for a reduction in blood pressure of three millimeters of mercury. They indeed found two millimeters of mercury. It was a statistically significant result. It was different, it reduced blood pressure. And looking at the population level, a drop of two millimeters of blood pressure is important. Two millimeters of mercury of decrease in blood pressure mean save thousands of lives. The reason I'm interested in it 
is because it's a different way of looking at hypertension, a different way of treating blood pressure. We've got very focused on medical treatment of hypertension. And there must be much more to it than that. Now there are some questions from this study. And that would be, if you have sleep apnea and you treat it with CPAP, yes, you get a reduction of blood pressure. But there are other ways of treating hypertension as well. Why would you not use medication? Why are there, are there other methods that you would use to reduce blood pressure? So this is an important study, but it's not the whole story. Certainly wouldn't refer all my patients to the sleep lab at this stage, but it's an introduction to an area that I think is going to become more and more important. Y luego algo que para nosotros es muy importante y es que tenías más de 40 apneas por hora de sueño y ahora te parabas más de 40 veces de respirar y ahora con tratamiento es cero, es decir, te has quedado completamente eh, normalizado. The characteristic of this patient are the following: obese patient or just overweight patients, uh, heavy snorer, during the night has a lot of pauses and also during the day have systemic hypertension. If you snore a sufferer for hypertension, 50% of them have severe obstructive sleep apnea. When a GP see a patient with systemic hypertension, the only question is, do you snore? If the answer is yes, send the patient to the sleep lab. Treatment with the PAP in this kind of patient reduce blood pressure. So this means that this treatment can save a lot of lives. Para estas cosas conviene hacerles caso, porque ellas se fijan mucho en cómo duermen ellos. Mm -hmm. Y por tanto suele ser, nuestra experiencia es que suelen tener bastante razón. La verdad es que en este caso, pues sí tenía razón. Parece que tampoco se tenemos que ir a todo, ¿no? 47-year-old builder Fermín Lominchar won the first round, having slept 18 minutes out of 20. He said he had no trouble at all nodding off. Great, great. I fell totally asleep, completely conked out. When they woke me, I was still half asleep. <laughs>